The delay of Asia's first travel bubble has further highlighted that the road to recovery for the travel industry is not going to be easy. The reopening of a travel between Singapore and Hong Kong was due to start yesterday, but has been pushed back two weeks. The move came after Hong Kong saw a jump in fresh coronavirus cases. And that sent shares of Cathay Pacific down by as much as 6.6% in early trade, uh, recovered to close about uh, 4% still in the red. Singapore Airlines there closed nearly half a percent down. Now, the impact of the pandemic is significantly harsher on both carriers as they do not have domestic routes to fall back on. The Singapore businesses are still looking forward to the air travel bubble. Some saying the delay hasn't affected their confidence in the arrangement. Gwyneth Teo has more. It's been a fruitful year for C.S. Liu. He's seeing more demand for fertilizers and pesticides, which his firm buys and sells from its Hong Kong office. Mr. Liu has a ticket booked for a flight there after Christmas for his usual trip to round up the year and meet business associates. If the air travel bubble is still grounded then, he's willing to wait until it takes off. There needs to be a lot of... Uh to and fro exchanges, it's not just sending me some numbers. With business associates, it's also important from social standpoint, you know, after the meeting, we will have dinner or lunch, you know, which you cannot do it through Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that part of business is still very important. Investment banker Victor Tay agrees. He has plans to head to Hong Kong the month the air travel bubble lifts off, whenever that may be. He wants to reassure clients that his firm is there for the long haul, as many others pulled out amid prolonged protests. It's important for us to, with this uh, opening of the travel bubble, to fly there and stamp our presence to show that uh, we still view them as an important uh, region and the clientele there are also important and partners as well. Mr Tay says the deferment is par for the course in a year that has already been very unusual and it hasn't shaken investor confidence. The Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office in Singapore says the most common inquiry from Singapore businesses with a presence in the territory is how to deal with border closures. A few months ago, we organised a webinar together with the Hong Kong Singapore Business Association so that we can give them updates and let them know what kind of support measures the government in Hong Kong is giving out to companies, in, including Singaporean companies operating in Hong Kong. These include wage and rental support. According to HKETO, about 450 Singapore firms have offices in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is Singapore's fifth largest trading partner and vice versa.